In this lecture, we'll discuss the role of dark matter in galaxy formation and learn about the largest structures in the universe. It's likely that dark matter is responsible for pulling together galaxies and galaxy clusters. There's just too much of it for it not to have played a role. You may recall that our understanding of galaxy formation is that hydrogen and helium gas in the protogalactic clouds collapse inward and give birth to stars. The dark matter is weakly interacting, so it's unable to radiate away orbital energy. It therefore stays in place and will not collapse into the, a disk like the rest of the material. This model tells us that the luminous matter in each galaxy, the disk and the globular clusters, must still be nestled inside the larger spherical halo of dark matter. Observations of the motions of stars within our own Milky Way and other galaxies support this idea. The formation of clusters of galaxies is likely to be similar to that of the formation of individual galaxies. Early on, all the galaxies that will eventually make up a cluster are flying apart with the expansion of the universe, but the gravity of the dark matter associated with the cluster eventually reverses the trajectories of these galaxies. The galaxies ultimately fall back inward and start orbiting each other with random orientations, much like the stars in the halo of our galaxy. Some galaxy clusters apparently have not yet finished forming. Their enormous gravity is still drawing in new galaxies. For example, the Virgo cluster of galaxies appears to be drawing in the Milky Way and other galaxies of the local group. The arrows on this diagram indicate the motions of individual galaxies over a space of hundreds of millions of light years. We can see that the galaxies flow in regions where the density of galaxies is already high. It's dark matter that helps pull galaxies together. We call the resulting vast, high-density regions superclusters. Beyond about 300 million light years from Earth, Hubble's law becomes our primary method for measuring distances to galaxies. With Hubble's law, astronomers can make maps of the distribution of galaxies in space. This endeavor requires a vast amount of data. In particular, astronomers need to measure the redshifts of each individual galaxy so that the distance can be estimated using Hubble's law. Measurements have been made for millions of distant galaxies. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey has created detailed three-dimensional maps of the universe with images of one-third of the sky and spectra for more than three million astronomical objects. The maps show that galaxies are not scattered randomly through space, but are instead arranged in huge chains and sheets that span many millions of light years. Clusters of galaxies are located at the intersections of these chains. Between these chains and sheets of galaxies are giant empty regions called voids. The overall distribution of galaxies appears nearly uniform on very large scales, and the structures we see appear to mirror the original distribution of dark matter in the early universe. Supercomputers can simulate the growth of galaxies, clusters, and large structures, providing models of extremely enormous regions of space. These models show how dark matter, assumed to be WIMPs, should be distributed throughout the entire observable universe. The results of these models look remarkably similar to the slices of the universe from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. This gives astronomers confidence in our understanding of the role of dark matter in the formation of large-scale structures. I'll leave you with these simulations from the Max Planck Institute for Astrophysics. Here, a large-scale simulation of galaxy distribution fades to the corresponding simulated distribution of dark matter. For me, it can be overwhelming to think about the enormity of our universe and how tiny we are. But at the same time, it's so beautiful, we can know so much about the structure of the cosmos. 
it's also humbling that there are still so many enormous mysteries waiting to be solved. Take care, and I'll talk to you again soon.